Hey, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Sean. And this is Sven. And you're listening to another episode of Coaster Kings Radio. Finally reunited across the continents. Yes. Um, no longer split up like that. <laughs> uh, today we're going to discuss kind of news topics, kind of uh, hot topics in the uh, roller coaster and theme park industries. Kind of talking about um, some Disney stuff that we're really excited for and uh, mm-hmm. lots of coaster construction across Europe and some in the US as well. So it'll be kind of uh, our topic today. Yes, and without Alex, unfortunately, I missed him in the intro. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a little space there. Um, he is uh, he's at work. I just dropped him off. Uh, we figured we uh, we kind of take a break from all of our park specific episodes and uh, bring you something that's a little more varied. So, um, what should we start with, Sven? Let's start with the finally revealed surf coaster. Surf coaster. All right. So. A while ago, we uh, found some permits that we released on the CoasterKings.com regarding mm-hmm. the Surf Coaster, which was, uh, I think it was uh, Project SF or um, FC, SC, something like that. Anything, mm-hmm. any, something indicating Surf Coaster, it was called Project Penguin. Um, now SeaWorld has been constructing. They've taken the whole um, special events pavilion and a special events walkway, and they've pretty much demolished all of it. It's going to look like a maybe a new entrance accompanying it, but oh. they just yesterday released, um, or two days ago at this point, um, some surf coaster teasers, which is a little video and a couple of pictures of this clearly B&M coaster hmm. with two across seating. It very much looks like it's a stand-up coaster. Um, that's coming to SeaWorld Orlando in 2023. So I'm excited for that. There's already a track on site. There's a lot of it stored right next to the Taco Bell across from the street. So that's there, ready to go, ready to get constructed. Um, what I'm hoping for, since it's a return of the stand-up coast, which I'm not really sure why they would bring that mm-hmm. back necessarily, uh, is I'm hoping that there is some sort of swinging element involved because on the um, permits and on the blueprints that we, we uncovered like oh, two years ago at this point, there seemed to be a wider envelope than usual. Okay. So I'm wondering, are these seats going to rotate outward a little bit? Almost like you're serving on the waves. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like swinging yeah. a little bit. Because when, when we talked about surf coaster, it made me think of in Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 or 3, I think, you had like the Australian the version where there were actually surfboards for the stand-up coaster. If I remember well, but then this will have only um, two cross seating, and it will also be launched, right? So that's the it third or fourth BNM launched. Then, if you count right. Hulk, the clone in, Be- in uh, Universal Beijing, true, and um, Thunderbird, right? Thunderbird, that's right. Yeah, yeah so. It'll be interesting um, to see B&M do the launch thing again. Um, Hulk was in-house. I don't actually know who did the launch on Beijing's Decepticoaster. That mm-hmm. was actually also in-house because Universal just knew what they were doing at that point. Yeah. Or if it was uh, B&M. But either way, it's interesting to see them attempt it again. Uh, it works great on Thunderbird. I'm surprised there aren't more launch B&Ms. Um, in the layout itself, there's not too much known about it. It looks like it may have an inversion or two, mm-hmm. but there isn't like, you know, it's not going to be an inversion heavy coast. So also, the layout isn't very compact or very wild. So I, I am thinking there is an unexplained element to the surf coaster that we don't know about yet, mm-hmm. which will kind of make the ride more interesting than what it looks like on a blueprint. So I'm excited to see what that what that may be. Um, I really think there may be a swinging element to it. Because, come on, like, you're going to call a product line a surf coaster. You have a wider envelope. I don't really understand the marketing behind a new stand-up coaster if it doesn't do something additional. So that's um, that's something to look forward to. Yes, definitely. And next up, um, should we stay in Orlando or should we move somewhere else across the world? What should we talk about next? No, oh, let's stay in Orlando. I think you're going to talk about your most recent rides on Guardians of the Galaxy yes. Cosmic Let's Rewind. Let's talk a little bit about this 
fantastically long name and long roller coaster. <laughs> is it what Epcot needed as a first roller coaster? It is definitely what Epcot needed, I will admit. But Epcot needs a lot more than just a roller coaster. <laughs> um, it was one of those things where like, everyone had been looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind for so long. That I think, for me personally, once it opened, I was like... Out of my head, I was like, it's going to fix the park. You know, it's going to open and we're going to have this new attraction. And, like, Epcot's going to be the park again. And it really mm-hmm. isn't. Um, Epcot doesn't <laughs> feel like it's changed one bit because that big building has been standing there for five years now. So, besides there being something inside that you could experience, which does require either purchasing individual lightning lane between 14 and $17 a person mm. or getting a virtual queue, which... You know, if you know the system, it's not terribly hard to get. But if you're just a regular pass, you know, a regular guest, um, it's not a super user friendly system. Um, I still don't think it fixed Epcot, but I do think it's what Epcot needed. Having its first roller coaster being a major, super high capacity, ten train, four minute long roller coaster, good addition. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing that the original concepts for this coaster were actually without an IP, they were going to just build a space themed pavilion that would explain the big bang and the universe and stuff and then you would have that omni coaster you know where you face in a certain direction okay as the focus of the attraction um i'm not sure if it needed the ip um so my biggest criticism of the attraction is you need to know what's going on but in order to know what's going on you have to pay very close attention to the non-stop babbling of the on-ride audio it's just talking okay. to you for the whole four minutes and there is a lot of stuff happening on big screens around the show building. Yeah, a little bit of spoilers here, but at this point, I'm pretty sure most people have heard that already. Um, there's a lot to pay attention to. Now I've written it like three or four times, and I've seen a bunch of POVs of it. I know exactly what I need to look at. I know exactly what's going on. I finally understand the story. But for a theme park enthusiast, it took me honestly kind of too long to understand what was going on in the attraction. And it feels a little bit repetitive. Um as a lot of Disney's kind of space mountain attractions do, because obviously this mm. is kind of like a super souped up, upgraded, spinning space mountain kind of attraction, lots of stars, you know, you're in space. Um, it's very helix focused, um, but there's okay. a couple of good pops of air. Uh, overall, good attraction, it's lengthy, um, has a solid launch, doesn't feel like it's over too soon, it's just kind of like the right length, like everything mm. can always be longer, but um, has the right length. Um, Good sense of, uh, of forcefulness. If you have to pick a row or you can choose a row, which generally speaking you can choose, um, but we uh, we like to request row nine because it is the front of the last car. Hmm. Since it's a spinning coaster, there are several elements that are much better enjoyed being the front of the back of the you know facing backwards. Um, oh yeah, it's also a little more intense. So for coaster enthusiasts, if you want to have a little bit of that like. You know, coaster nerdiness to it, where it kind of feels like there are some intense air moments. I would say row nine, front row is very, very Disney by it. It's not like, it's mm. not a very intense ride by any means. Despite it being really tall and it has like a backwards launch and stuff, it doesn't really feel like that big of a, <laughs> like, like that intense of a ride. So, um, yeah, um, hopefully that kind of reviews it. You said that the IP, you don't really know if it was necessary, but isn't the music also an important part of the alum, of the ride? Yeah, so the music is a great addition. It, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice guidance through the journey because it's such a long ride that having something to listen to, you know, it, it's a vibe, if that makes sense. But at the same time, some of the songs, in my opinion, are almost a little bit distracting because while they're playing this pop song from the 80s, they are also telling a whole story to you with all okay. these different characters that are speaking at the same time. It'll be like Rocket, and then it'll be like Star Lord, and then it'll be Drex, and then it'll be Groot, and then it'll be, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of yeah. speaking on the ride that are all kind of interacting regarding the story that then like tie in the pre show and then tie in all this information that you learn throughout the queue. It's just a lot to understand. Like now I completely understand this. Now I'm like enjoying the ride a lot more. My first time riding it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sure code. I got off a little disappointed. Okay. Um, I was like, wow, like I really liked the experience, as in like in a roller coaster, as in like a multimedia kind of experience. But I cannot tell you what we did. I cannot tell you what happened. You know, even though to try and make it really clear, yeah, they spent too much time narrating. I feel like an attraction needs to be able to tell its own story by mm. visuals, not necessarily by 
telling it to you in one certain language. Because, for yeah. example, if I didn't know English, I would have been quite lost. But rides in, for example, Shanghai Disney, where it's all in Mandarin, I can piece it all together because I visually, it's kind of what tells the story. There's not a whole lot of narrating. Yeah. Um, and I think I prefer rides that, okay, having audio score is awesome. Having like good music is really, really important, especially for a Disney ride. But needing to rely 100% on the audio almost to kind of like guide you through each scene for a coaster, it's kind of hard because you are moving very fast and you are spinning and you are in the dark and, you know, it's kind of like, okay, what's going on? Um, mm-hmm. That's my only real criticism. Other than that, great phenomenal roller coaster, really enjoyable, very different. Not something that you can experience any, anywhere else because of the controlled spinning and the length of the ride and, you know, the, the scenery that's put in there. Physical sets, there are not too many of them, but the physical sets that are there are awesome. Um, it is kind of screen based, but in in a new, refreshing way. If that makes sense, it's not like mm. you're standing in front of a screen. You're, the screens are kind of around you while you're moving. So yeah, that's uh, yeah. Another question I had was like, okay, so Vekoma developed almost this coaster for Disney. Do you feel like it would fit in other parks? Yeah, it's a clever application where you can kind of make a dark ride into a roller coaster. It's Green Gods on steroids. It's not the first time it's been done because mm-hmm. Green Gods has obviously that controlled spinning element, but it's a lot less coaster to it. Um, yes, I can see it's being applied elsewhere, but I think this kind of ride system is created for a very, very high budget attraction. Yeah, where you need to have theming everywhere, and it needs to be a complete story, and perhaps the use of screens and. I think that immediately rules out the majority of other parks that could even think of investing in that. Hmm. Because at that point, you might as well go with the Mac Extreme Spinner and the 7 Free Spinning. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, what is cool is that Guards of the Galaxy, uh, Cosmic Rewind, can run in four different modes, at least. I believe it's four or five different modes. So it can run either a Free Spinning, it can run Control Spinning, it can run completely forwards or completely backwards. We have some friends that are cast members that have written um, all four combinations of those. Okay. So that's kind of cool. And um, another nice thing about Guardians is um, audio is that obviously it's 2022. So audio is no longer kind of like Rock and Roller Coaster where like one train has one song installed. Um, all trains can play all songs. And they have, have with the screens and the um, this, you know audio built into the trains, they have the option to do overlays really easily. Kind of how um, Guardians of the Galaxy and Anaheim became... Um, Monsters After Dark for Halloween they will have that option for Guardians too oh, okay. and it looks like one of the first uh, overlays uh, may already be happening within the near future where it's going to be like different songs for like the season so it'll be one of those attractions that Disney can really um, use in so many different ways and I, I think mm-hmm. if they even start doing separately ticketed events for say Epcot they, they will be able to turn that ride into something else mm-hmm. so that's exciting, and I think we'll be seeing that pretty soon, too. So be, be on the lookout for marketing. I don't want to give too much away, but it looks like we're already going to have like special versions of Guardians, hmm. I think, within the first year of operation. I mean, for the amount that they supposedly paid for it, it <laughs> there can... There better be something else. <laughs> there better be something <laughs> like that, yeah. But to, yeah. to keep going into the space theme... There's also another space attraction from Disney that's getting renewed in Tokyo. That's right. So they're going to completely demolish current Space Mountain Tokyo. Oh, really? Which for, yeah. So for those that have written it, Space Mountain Tokyo is like super analog. So if you think like Space Mountain Anaheim when the original opened, um, they never actually upgraded the Tokyo one. Like it's There was no onboard audio on it. It's just offboard audio. The rockets still light up oh, wow. with, like the, the, with like the paint on the side. The queue still has that like um, tunnel through the queue that's all glass. So you can see the rockets whiz by. Um, very analog, old school experience. Um, they're completely going to be demolishing the ride. And then they're going to be building a completely new space mountain. In its place. Now, at first, I kind of thought I was going to use the same building and it was going to make it look cuter. You know, like, update yeah. it a little bit. But no, they're going to completely demolish the whole thing and uh, build a new modern space mountain, which looks like it's going to be, and this is from inside sources, so I'm not going to tell too much, but looks like it's going to be using the Guardians of the Galaxy on the coaster ride system, kind of doing that without necessarily an IP attached. So, almost like the original concept of it just being about space. Um, looks like we're going to be having a longer, 
more varied ride layout because you know the original layout wasn't very inspired <laughs> um, and, and it's going to have physical sets um, and using that on the coaster um, ride track to um, create a new experience it will not have inversions though it'll you know it'll, let's just say mm. kind of like Guardians doesn't have inversions it'll stay a little more family friendly than um, mm. that's some of the bigger Disney coasters out there yeah that feature remains for Paris only <laughs> I know, and it's kind of cool, too, because when you think about it, I, I was kind of excited. I was like, oh, maybe we'll do inversions. But when you think about Tokyo, there's, like, one loop in the whole resort. Yeah. And there's, like, billboards for the one singular loop. Like, they have to warn people. <laughs> there's, like, a little little icon with a train every few seconds, like, does a little loop, and it's, like, has these, like, blinking lights and forming people. There's a loop on Raging Spirits. Um, I don't think that Tokyo audience would, would do very well with an inversion. Mm-hmm. Having said that, I would love... For Disneyland Paris to build an the coaster with an inversion, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, I, if I had it my way. Um, I mean, they have other things in Paris at the moment, like their construction continues on the frozen area. So there's a little bit, a bit more cranes going up, but still nothing very noticeable. But on the other hand, we have, of course, the opening of... Avengers Campus at the Walt Disney Studios as well that finally will open. Um, so the official date is July 20th, but um, pass holders should have uh, previews and uh, we will get more information about that on June 15th. So that's next Wednesday. Um, and it's not sure how it will be work because on the one hand you'll have probably a time slot for your entrance to the area and on the other hand you'll have to see if you can get a park reservation so yeah i I definitely wonder about that because um i don't even know if i'll be able to even take advantage of it um because i would have to really plan around that but um in walt disney world for example as long as your pass wasn't blocked out on that particular date of the Guardians preview, then you would get a bonus reservation that the park would okay. automatically make for you. So for us, we have the um, Sorcerer Pass at the Walt Disney World, which has five reservations. So if you had all five already used, then Disney would just make you a sixth one automatically. So by getting a time slot for the preview, you would automatically have a park reservation linked. And yeah, that would, would not make go sense. Towards yeah. your minimum. So hopefully that's what happens in Paris because hmm. I've already seen on the past all the pages, people going crazy. They're like booking all these dates, hoping that they're going to get a preview slot. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, maybe you guys are overthinking it, but you never know. It's a different resort. Yeah. But um, I mean, it's exciting to have a new dark ride opening, especially in the Walt Disney Studios. Because even if Spider-Man is not the e-ticket that uh, people... That you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just from what I've heard, of course, because I haven't written it yet. But what I, I really imagine a kind of Toy Story Mania style attraction, but then Spider Man themed. And yeah, I think in the US the closest thing would be um, the Legoland Ninjago rides. Okay, yeah. You well, we have hands. those in Europe as well. Yeah. Oh, you do too. Okay, I wasn't sure. So I guess that's going to be the closest thing, but probably a little more high tech. Yeah. Um. I have actually not written the one in Anaheim mm. yet. We're writing it next week or in two weeks from now. Okay. Uh, I'm excited, but I'm cautious. Yeah. Because the amount of friends and people I know that have mixed opinions about it, mm. and they're looking at the app every day for Disneyland, and seeing that like everything <laughs> will have like an hour wait, and then, like mm-hmm. 20 minutes for web slingers. So, like, wow, this popularity is dwindled quick. And honestly, um, I think Spider-Man is the most popular Marvel character in Europe. So oh, great, okay. that, like, the that general public will that? eat this, you know? Yeah. And then there's also... I, I'm also excited for the reopening of the former rock and roller coaster because it will give the first animatronic in the Walt Disney Studios, which is kind of <laughs> hilarious, but... <laughs> what a luxury for a Disney park. <laughs> It's like, yay! I mean, the, 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 the main park has some very nice animatronics. Oh, for sure. But, um... The it was time that the Walt Disney Studios got one as well, and then also for the food, it will be very good for the Walt Disney Studios because there's not a lot of restaurants 
or quick service options. Yeah, it's kind of like crazy. It has to kind of go to that main giant one that's mm-hmm. inside the show, like Studio One. Yep, or, or the Ratatouille kind of restaurant. Those True. are like the the main draws. You can get a reservation for it. Um, but uh, I don't know if you uh, ever went there, but there was also like a diner uh, type of area in the Walt Disney Studios. I, uh, the name, the I backlog? think it's Café de Cascadeur. So that's like the, the cafe for the stuntman. Um, it was in the back, yeah. So yeah, it will that's reopen. What they turned into, um, yeah, it's Café de Cascadeur, what it used to be. That's uh, one of the two new restaurants, right? Now they, they remodeled it? Uh, well, one of the three, because you'll have uh, on the one hand the Pim's Kitchen, so that's same concept as in Anaheim, with, uh, but it will be a buffet in yeah. Disneyland Paris as it used to be. Uh, then there's a quick service, um, which already had an Iron Man uh, layover, I think, at once. It used to be the high school musical restaurant and uh, partly Ooh, pirates wow. as well. So. <laughs> But Star then you had right? Café de Cascadeur, and that was like uh, one of the few restaurants where every, every burger was like made fresh because they didn't have a large kitchen behind it to, um, yeah, to have like the, the pre-prepared burgers and all that. But so it will return, but no longer as uh, with an option to stay there, which is a bit to eat uh, in the diner. Which does make sense because the capacity was like zero, <laughs> but um, but it's good that they kept it and that it will return in some form. So now, what restaurant are you most excited for? I think that one because uh, so it will be the super diner, and and I unfortunately I never got the chance to eat there before it changed. But uh, I really like the aesthetic of diners because in Europe, it's, it's, uh, it's like a cliche for the States, you know? It's, um, sure. Yeah, because one of the biggest restaurants at Disney Village is Annette's American yeah. Diner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about the rides a tiny bit more. Do we know if there's any differences between Web Slingers in Anaheim and um, Spider-Man WEB Adventure? And well, Paris? not to my knowledge, we've seen in the preview that you'll also be able to buy like the add-on to have some extra shooting during the ride. From what I've not heard, to, uh, not to upcharging. Oh yeah, yeah, for <laughs> to sure. To get a higher score, I love that. No, actually, I mean, I don't, but I mean, why not? But um, I think in Europe, people will not be so dedicated to buy those that kind of merch but we'll see and i mean if they have it available for the states then it's it's i guess it's a not a big cost to ship some over to europe and to try it there as well but um also on top of the building there probably won't be a stunt animatronic for spider-man big sad so um like from what we've seen from images, it doesn't seem as if it will be there, but who knows? Yeah, no, as far as I know, it won't because it wasn't mm-hmm. all the things they released about the area, which is quite a bit of information, which can yeah. all be found on the coast of kings.com as well. Um, none of it mentioned anything like that kind of sun show, lots of like parade kind mm-hmm. of walkthroughs to the area, and there'll be that training center. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it looks like there won't be mm-hmm. that stunt animatronic, unfortunately. And another small thing that happened was that they added some slight theming to the um, seating area of the former stunt show. So, like, the the, the, the structure. Um, so, I mean, they know it's there. They try to blend it in a little bit, I guess. Uh, but it's still unclear what will happen to that if it will return as some kind of stunt show or not, or maybe it's just for events, because I, uh, if I remember correctly, they use that for, for example, the jazz night at the Walt Disney Studios. So um, Now, that I, is interesting to me, because when you go to the app of Disneyland Paris Resort, that giant theater is on there. They literally mm-hmm. have a gap between... 
the rest of the park and where Avenger Campus is still blocked out. And then you have the actual like Big Sun Theater. I would mm-hmm. presume slash hope it's coming back. They need it. They need capacity. That's one thing. But on the other hand, that's also next to it is the area where the supposed Star Wars land will come. So, like, it is a dead end for that side of the park. I mean, I think you can rotate maybe one road towards the Tower of Terror like you used to be able to. I'm not sure if that will still be the case. But, um, yeah, I'm excited to visit. Maybe I'll have, like, a pass holder preview. Otherwise, it will be um, after the opening in July that I'll have a look. Now... You mentioned Star Wars. I've heard rumors that Star Wars is off the table and Ava- sorry, Avatar um, is what's coming to Walt Disney Studios with a unique attraction just for Paris. Any thoughts on that? Did you hear anything else on that? No, I haven't heard anything of it. The last things that I heard was that they were sticking to Star Wars. And honestly, for Europe, I think that's the better choice. Um, cause I feel like Avatar is not as much an IP that we're familiar with. Like everyone knows the movie, but there's still this connection with Star Wars that's quite big. I mean, you you could see it when there was the, um, the Star Wars celebration days, um, season actually in Disneyland Paris that used to be the low season, but thanks to Star Wars, it actually attracted people to the parks, especially to the studios, which is like something. So, <laughs> but a push for attendance. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not sure if galaxy's edge is the way to go. Like if they would do a, a kind of Tatooine, that would be something that the I Europeans think they would want enjoy this- a lot more. To really be a global success, doing Galaxy's Edge is not the answer. Because I think a lot of the clientele that would be willing to travel for Star Wars anyway, yeah, they would go to Galaxy's Edge in Florida. You know, if we're talking European audience. I think having a unique land that is just for Europe would, first of all, get people through the gate. But also, I think it would actually incentivize the U.S. market to travel to Paris. I think Adventure Campus is already doing that. Um as a travel agent, I'm already seeing lots of interest in booking Disneyland Paris and Avenger Campus is that push. I think having a unique Star Wars land based on perhaps the older movies like Tatooine in Paris would actually be a good way to sell. Like instead of having all the Europeans always go to the U.S. parks, actually have a lot larger of an American attendance at, at the at the Paris park. So that would be cool. I'd agree. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and so far thing, that thing is all rumors, you know. It is all rumors because especially with the concepts, they just removed any signs of anything. So it's like, <laughs> what will be where the trees are at? Um, and then one more question for you um, about the relaunch of Rock and Roller Coaster into the um, Adventures Assemble Flight Force. <laughs> it's that name. Um, do we know any sort of effects that will be there? I know it will be an animatronic, right? But is mm-hmm. there anything we know about the show building? Anything we know we can see in there? Uh, no. So uh, that's all kept as a good secret. It's even unclear if they renewed the trains or not, because the concept arts don't really show that it is the case. So they, that it, so basically it would not be the same trains as hyperspace. Uh, right. Um, yeah. It looks like they're the so same rock roller coaster trains, but like yeah. an Iron Man kind of look to them. Yeah, And then I did see a construction picture a while ago um, of the inside of the show building where there was like these giant tunnels, almost like in Credit Coaster, where there's like these LED tunnels. So I'm expecting there to be some sort of like 360 screen aspect Mm. inside the show building. Um, How are they going to make that blend with the very dark core of the building? I'm not Mm -hmm. sure. I guess we'll find out. But I'm very excited. We'll be back this summer to experience that. But what will be interesting and more than I think that we realize is the the front of the ride, like the digital uh, panel. I think that Uh we'll do stuff with that that we don't know yet. Actually, I think it seems that they can play do a lot of good things and play with it. You know, it's going to help with the seasonal thing too. Mm -hmm. Now, what I think will be nice um, about this adventure campus versus um, the other two. One of them is no longer called Adventure Campus. It's called Stark Expo in Hong Kong. 
yeah. which is honestly kind of like a small offshoot of their Tomorrowland. We visited yes. it a couple of years ago. Um, it's nice, but it's honestly just kind of like one walkway. There really isn't much to it. There's like two, three buildings. Um, then there's one in Anaheim that's kind of wedged in between everything. So, mm-hmm. And having their uh, Guardians of the Galaxy being part of the original Hollywood area, it almost feels a little disjointed when it comes to like the, the way attractions are facing. Mm-hmm. Now, I think this one will be the most concise one. You have buildings on either side of the wall of the midway. It is its own offshoot of the park. Mm-hmm. It has lots of greenery. I've already noticed the amount of trees they yeah, planted. Definitely. We were just there a couple of days ago and it looks it looks really, really nice. It looks it doesn't look like a giant, wide open modern Disney area where the sun is, you know, baking your feet in the pavement. It looks <laughs> it looks really nice. Like I'm actually generally very excited for the architectural aspect of it. Um Looks like they've really done a good job so far, and we haven't even been inside yet. So yeah, it's I'm the first step for the Walt Disney Studios to really get into a new life. You know, it, it's time. Yeah, themed lands versus themed attractions inside green studio themed back lots. More food. Yeah. Actually, being a theme park and not like a concrete walkway. Well, that's what's <laughs> going to be so funny about um, that giant new lake with frozen on it and the restaurant and the nighttime show and the potential star wars and the potential additional uh, dark ride it's so unlike studios at this point Mm -hmm. i'm like i guess studio is even a fitting name anymore but i I do think that the name is is pretty clever so i I like the name Walt Disney studios so i'm excited to see them move Mm -hmm. away from that failed concept finally after 20 years of operating um and moving somewhere that's a little more like a combination of perhaps Walt disney world's three other parks into one kind of collective experience. Um, I'm excited for it. I still root for the Cinemagic to return as the name of the park, but we'll that, see. That would, that would be a Cinemagic Park, a Park Cinemagic. Oh my God, that would be nice. Okay, Sven, I feel this. Yeah. But, I, I would wear French, spirit jersey with that. <laughs> I am very curious how the French will pronounce the name of the Avengers uh assemble flight force i'm really curious how that sounds in french <laughs> it is not one that's easy for the average european to pronounce um in fact i even find it a little loaded for u.s standards we love throwing really complicated ass ride names out there mm-hmm. in the u.s um which disney has a tendency of doing that anyway i feel like sometimes their names make no sense like um alex and i were talking about it yesterday actually we were t- about long ride names disney it's like Indiana Jones Adventure, the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. I mean, at this point, why the hell is the word adventure in there? Why wouldn't you just be <laughs> Indiana Jones, the Temple of Forbidden Eye? Why is the adventure part there? Um, and as, as a Flight Force, I'm sorry, Avengers Assemble of Flight Force, I feel like it's a little forced. But, mm-hmm. you know, at least it's unique, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I think they'll just call it the... Iron Man coaster or something. Yeah, honestly, Sorry. I'm surprised the just go with like the Iron Man coaster, but um, I guess there's a lot more to it than just Mr. Iron Man himself. So yeah, I guess cause... they had to make it a collective name, especially yeah. Spider Man is already so focused on one character. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where did the rest of the Avengers end up? So because Captain Marvel also promoted in the reveal video, so for specifically yeah, I guess she's a pretty ride. major part of that ride. Yeah, mm-hmm. c- uh, I have so many questions. I can't wait to ride it. Will Exciting. I watch a POV before I ride it? I'm going to try not to. I did it with Guardians. I didn't watch a POV, and it was actually kind of fun to write something and not know what's happening. So Yeah, I, may, uh, I, I may usually do to that, that too. But, I'm glad um, you have that self-control. Close by in Paris, we also have a new exciting roller coaster coming to Parc Astérix, uh, tout à tis. And to say this is exciting, it's an understatement. This is the park's <laughs> um, largest investment in the history of its existence. And mm-hmm. um, which the park has had some pretty major investments, like talking big B&Ms, um, well, one big B&M. Yeah. Uh, but generally speaking, they, they've had some pretty big attractions over the years um, that for their time were big deals. I mean, Hood Rix was pretty big. Um, yeah. Tassoura was pretty big. Obviously, Uziris was big. So now building their Turn biggest the attraction yet. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. These are these are this park generally does a pretty big thing once in a while. And this is the biggest thing they've ever done. Mm-hmm. This is like a combination of Velocicoaster and Pantheon and Taron, like on steroids almost. I'm really curious how similar it will be to Pantheon, or if it's actually a totally different layout. Or yeah. So from what I've seen, it looks like it's a lot more low to the ground. Pantheon has like five giant elements. Mm. Uses a lot of speed. Has a lot of height. 
but it doesn't do a whole lot beyond that. It looks like Tatatis or uh, Tutatis. It looks like it's gonna have a lot more mm. kind of like the smaller elements too, mm. which throughout the forest. Because even if you look at like the weird overbank, you know, there's some construction pictures out there mm-hmm. that are piecing that information together. Um, looks like you know that's below the tree line. There's trees taller than some of the major elements, mm-hmm. um, and they really carved out this path between the trees. So it's going to be, I think, quite a different experience still. Um, let me yeah. look at some stats real quick here. So I have them pulled up um, on RCDB, but I have them in feet. So um, let me um, just start with the feet real quick. Um, length is uh, 3,526 feet. It says a top height of 167.3 feet. So it's taller than Velocicoaster, which is interesting because Velocicoaster to me already seemed quite tall. Um, has three inversions. The um, top hat actually has a vertical angle of 101 degrees. So if you look at some of the... Mm-hmm. Um, pictures of it online, I was kind of tripping. I was like, this is like a distorted photo. What is it? Uh, but no, it literally has like a beyond vertical drop. Pretty sick. Um, duration to ride, two minutes and three seconds. Um, apparently 23 separate airtime points. Hmm. That's, that's a lot. That's been a, a thing, you know, like people really are going like new Parks are building coasters that are airtime focused now. That's like the I new know, it's thing. funny. It's kind of like a recurrence of what was mm. once like the hyper coaster fad, and then there was the looper fad, and there's now we're back to like a combination of the two, I guess, where like airtime and loopings or whatever inversions are allowed to coexist. Um, and it's kind of refreshing, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. Looks like it will have a zero G stall, several, uh, four launches total. I know that. I think it's. One launch and then like the the the, four, the three launches because it does the multi pass, and then it has um, a zero G so two zero G cells in the barrel roll. Looks like that's the inversion. Okay. So not super unique, but um, but so yeah, yeah length wise with oh, oh, a bit over a kilometer, it's longer than Pantheon. It's slightly. Uh, Pantheon is 54 meters, while Tutatis is 51, so it's like not yeah, as tall, close, but it, I mean three meter. But it looks like Pantheon has a top speed of 117.5 kilometers per hour, while um, Tutatis will 107, so it will be slightly slower. Okay. And one but more I'm inversion, quite impressed. so three instead of two. Yeah. Um, that's actually. Kind of, thank you for comparing the two because Pantheon is quite quite a massive ride, and I didn't quite realize that uh, Tutatis was going to be that large, mm-hmm. um, despite having so many elements that you know from construction pictures are within the tree line. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually really excited for it, and if uh, for those who don't really know where it's located, it kind of if you know Trastura, which is their bobsled coaster by Mac, it's a lot of it's very suspended. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a waste of air uh, yeah but they now are filling in the whole land below it i think they had like sheep walking down there in the, in the, in the season <laughs> i don't remember that but it could be uh... <laughs> and now they are building a new uh, expansion land um with a new coaster now there's a couple opinions i have about them expanding like that um i feel like there's areas of the park that need a whole lot more love than them building a whole new land and I feel like for a European park, it was a little rough around the edges in some parts than a lot of other parks. But that is my main criticism. I'm like, that would have been okay. a really cool addition if it was just part of the main midway. Didn't really need to be a new land for me. But that's my only, like, that's just something that popped in my head right now. Mm-hmm. What yeah, I mean, what? I'm not, I don't necessarily agree because I feel like with the area that they already have, which needs some love, like the medieval area, mm-hmm. it feels like they need to do something indoor there and not like build a major coaster. Um, what would you also consider as an area that needs some love then in the park? Honestly, the Parisian area, um, pretty much anything from. The log flume all the way to uh, Guderix over there. That's like that yeah, long walkway. But, yeah, that's so what much... I meant. That's what I meant. That's the what I see as the medieval area because it you. used okay. to have um, Transdemonium, the dark ride. Yeah. So they have a lot of space there, but I feel like they can use it for something nice indoor. Um, but what will be nice here is that um, it will be integrated in the forest. And it will be visible from the highway. So they used to be like very hidden from the highway. And I feel like... Especially once, before Osiris. 
Yeah, and I feel like Osiris was like the change to, okay, now we make it visible and people see it. And the amount of people that I hear around me, like from Belgium, that say, oh, we always pass there, but we never stopped. At least now they notice that the park is there because they've seen Osiris. They will see Tutatis. And it's like, okay, that's another major coaster. Let's go. So It's funny It's funny you mention that because I remember our first time to Paris, the park was closed, but we drove straight by Osiris um, on the mm-hmm. way to Disney. And I still remember that view. I've only literally only driven on that freeway like once. And I still remember that view because now it's like, wow, there's a big park here. Like, you know, mm-hmm. having a B&M right <laughs> at the side of the park is almost like, oh, yeah. like, like a power statement, right? Like a, like a hood ornament. And having, you know, two uh, tatis taken out will be, will be the same thing. I'll, I think you're right on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I've looked at some of the <laughs> concepts. I do like the artwork for it. I do like mm-hmm. the aesthetic they're going for. That like Stonehenge kind of. Yeah. storytelling naturalistic approach um it looks cute i just don't think if this was necessarily what the park needed if that makes sense i'm so excited for it don't get me wrong, yeah i but. understand but i feel like they will really want to compete with disney and they really want to expand their resort because they're adding more hotels and um they feel like okay let's go big and, and I like that feeling. <laughs> Honestly, I like it too because it puts a little more pressure underneath Disney's ass. Yes, yes. Now, do they share as much of a market? Their markets are different, but they share mm-hmm. enough of the they share enough of the Parisian, which is a large market. It's like 15 million market. Mm-hmm. They share enough of that market, and they share enough of friends for people that prefer to visit resorts in their own language within you know travel distance on their own national trains, that kind of stuff. They have they have a market that still overlaps despite having different kind of audiences. So I think it will be nice to be like, all right, well, Park Asterix is adding hotels and they're adding giant roller coasters and perhaps even a dark ride in the future if that's, you know, what will replace Transdemonium. I think it's nice for Disney to be like, all right, well, Parks and are adding all this stuff. Mm-hmm. We better also add new stuff. You know, yeah. it's always kind of worked like that. Disney World works the same way. They'll be dormant for years until Universal pulls some crazy stuff out of their ass and all of a sudden <laughs> Disney's got to build something again. Um, yeah. I think it works the same for Paris, so... But so, yeah, the, the news about Tutatis was that it was topped off. So the top hat is installed. And there was another ride that was topped off, right? Yes. So jumping all the way, 13-hour flight, 12-hour flight away, we are <laughs> looking at um, Wonder Woman at Six Flags Magic Mountain, um, the RMC single road coaster. Also topped off, not completed yet. Same with uh, Tutatis. Um but yes, the, the highest point has been completed. I'll be honest, I think it looks phenomenal. The way they located it within the, within the park um, doesn't feel too squished. It also feels kind of like it fills in what was previously kind of a big gap of, of you know concrete midways, which we hate those things. Um, I'm excited. It looks great. I'm not a big single rail person or um, for the, the shoulder restraint purposes, mm-hmm. but I do hear that, given this is, practically in all intents and purposes a near clone of uh, jersey devil that the longer more stretched out coasters are not quite as um super ejector heavy which i'm actually looking forward to one on quite a bit for that reason i look forward to uh, to riding um that kind of ride position without necessarily getting murdered every two seconds on my shoulders. <laughs> so yeah i'm excited for that you know i find it really funny how they can pull that ride in that area because when i visited back in 2018 i didn't feel like there was room for it but then when you see the pictures now it's like okay they managed somehow <laughs> i think the main thing is that these single road coasters are tight are so super compact mm. by having such a small envelope and doing such tight turns that even in an area where you normally think like no way it could be coaster fitting here they could somehow yeah. fit like a little sliver of like an rmc single road track in there somewhere um, it works, and um, yeah, I'm excited yeah. for that to be a thing. You know, yeah, and and since it's so limited, it's surprising that there is not yet one in Europe. But oh wait, a park announced. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> there hold. is a park that announced that they are looking into one, and that's why so we hold on. Once you go RMC, you can't go back, I guess, because um, yeah. Here we are. Um, it looks like the parks that are adding RMC coasters again for the second time already have, well, obviously have one already. But um, Wallaby Holland, despite being one of the very few RMC parks in Europe currently, one of three? Yes. Um, they are now already adding their second RMC, which will be a single rail coaster. 
Mm-hmm. Um, they very clearly in a memo to their own team said that they aren't going to be revealing the layout yet. Um, <laughs> if that's because it is custom, I don't think so. I just think that they haven't really finalized the, um, the overall concept art, perhaps, of what they're mm-hmm. going to be doing with it. Um, I would like for it to be this, the larger one, just because I think... Um, that park already has some really compact stuff that I'm like for for a major park with stuff like Goliath. Mm-hmm. You already have kind of lost gravity. It kind of feels a little smaller yes. than than the rest. I don't know if adding a single rail Wonder Woman rail blazer, as in like the original two or stunt pilot, the smaller ones would 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 feel like anything marketable at that point. Like it looks fun and different, but I think if you want to have something that that looks marketable, intimidating, larger than life. Um, and still being a single role, I think they should go with the larger layout, but that's just an opinion, really. Mm-hmm. But at least they confirmed that it will be coming, and it would will be coming in 2024. So. Which, I mean, that's pretty soon already. Yeah, they've already signed mm-hmm. the paperwork. Um, that's exciting. Yeah, it's like really crazy how um, Company des Alpes is going for the investments with Tutatis, with this new RMC, with the crazy raft rapid coming to Belloarde, Wally Behol, uh, Belgium just got Conda, so it's like they're going for now, it. Now, I wonder is this a response to other chains making mass investments? Because Parques Renidos in um, Europe is obviously making big moves too. They started adding, you know, they had Fury at uh, Bobiano, they had, they had Gold Rush at Sahara, and then they added Star Trek. and Move Park Studios, and then now they're building a coaster at Park at Warner. They, you know, I, I'm starting to feel like it's this like great moment in time where like everything's mm. like becoming a catalyst for other parks to react, and like and suddenly everyone's like building because everyone is mm. building. So if you don't build, they're gonna fall behind. Yeah, um, I love that. <laughs> but yes, I'm starting to wonder like what was the motivation because um, traditionally Park, uh, 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 sorry, um, Company des Alpes, Company des Alpes is not like a company that did a whole lot of big infrastructural investments they used to set still for years uh, Wally Hall is a great example mm-hmm. I mean the boomerang set there and you know eventually they brought that back and that was like all the way up to Love's Gravity kind of like the biggest thing um, so I wonder like what is what is the reason behind that but either way I'm really excited to mm-hmm. see what's next for that whole chain um, because that's it right now their parts yeah because what be run up also Got yeah. it's uh, Mystic, and there's rumors of also a new coaster coming in 2024. Yeah, yeah it should be. I mean, I don't know how much I can say, but it should, it's going to be a pretty large attraction. Um, mm-hmm. We'll talk. We'll talk off off mic. But um, yeah, so I think overall, uh, I'm excited for for mm. PDA parks. Uh, for Tuloscope, um, are they adding anything? They have Mission Mars. Oh, which also they have a big expansion coming. They're adding a big water park. They're adding so the um, the new ride concept from Mac, like the drifting water um, dark ride system, if I remember correctly. Because out of the top of my head, there's quite some new things coming. And I will be visiting um, this week, end of this week. So I'll have more news about everything new coming for sure so uh That'd we can really talk exciting. about that in the future but um yeah but in the netherlands i mean walibi holland still has big competition from that other resort in <laughs> the other part. well yeah then there's obviously the big boy efteling efteling <laughs> which uh, has announced that dance macabre as their new 2024, if I'm not mistaken, edition, yeah. mm-hmm. which they haven't quite revealed what it is, but Sven is a little snoopy boy and he knows exactly, well, he knows what the rumors are. Yeah, I mean, if what you look rumor? online on on the different fora and all that, you can see that the rumors are going towards an Interman Dome Right Theater. So, like, that will probably be one of the first, unless there is one in China or Asia that I have never heard of. It would probably be a knockoff if it was, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) But, so, if you look up the concept, it's like a dome theater, and it it makes you think of a flying theater, but it's different. Like, it's a giant circle with inwards-looking seats that can spin around inside of a large ball dome 
<laughs> it reminds me. What is it called? Is it called a Tagata? I'm looking at it real quick. I forgot. The yeah. Name real quick. Yeah, I know what you mean. So it looks yeah. like a Tagata ride. Yeah, it's a Tagata, but without. Yeah. Um, so with restraints around that circle, and then there not being a floor. So like you're yes. suspended over the theater, which is also above you, mm-hmm. and the maximum tilt is about thirty degrees in each direction. So you yes. know, kind of like a Tagata, quite literally, but like a modern <laughs> simulator free fly version. Yeah. So. Um... But it's, it's, yeah, compared to what um, Spokeslot is right now, it's like a huge change. And it's, it makes you understand why they need to remove the current building and remove something similar, but in same style, but then something that can hold that type of attraction, you know. Now, something that I'm curious about is um, because clearly they're letting the theme, the idea live on, right? Like the whole mm-hmm. yeah. spoke salt, whatever it is in English. Especially kind of the vibe. music, yeah. Yeah, so in my head, I'm like, well, there is a good chance that maybe Efteling in its modern ways will add a cue or a pre-show element that will really kind of live up to spoke slot, like pay homage to it and then have that giant attraction, you know, afterwards. Um that is what I'm expecting personally. I really don't, because they're supposed to build like a mini new area for it. Mm-hmm. And the entrance to Don's Macabre will be in front of Piranha. Um, it'll be facing in that direction from what I've read. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping but, that they kind of let that live on with something new. Oh yeah, for sure. Cause like the, um, th- they already confirmed that the story will be guided by the music from the current spoke slot by the Don's Macabre. Music, really awesome. so that makes a, a lot of sense. Um, but so yeah, it's it for Efteling. It doesn't feel like a major investment to me. But on the other hand, it will probably be bigger than we expect, maybe. And I'm hoping it's a bit more thrilling than we think as well, because Efteling needs a little bit more thrilling flat rides, you know. Yeah, I think I agree with you. It'll be nice to have, especially having Villa Volta already, which is a classic uh, madhouse. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And building like a really modern flying version of it, it's going to require a little more kick in order for it to not just feel like the same old thing. Yes. I think. Um, Although the projection will play a big role in that, of course. Sure. So I do think this kind of attraction allows for a lot more thrill then obviously uh, the madhouses do. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm excited to see uh, to see what they bring. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I want to pop over to Toveland real quick because I did hear uh, that Toveland wants to expand the Avalon area and build some more new attractions there. Yes. Uh, which would be the first time um, in almost recorded Toveland history where they're adding new attractions to an existing area versus building a new land. Um, so it'll be nice to have that side of the park even more fleshed out. Um, because right now it's quite spacious. There's... A lot of space, but only like two attractions really in Avalon. I don't mean nice to have more attractions there, but I kind of forgot what exactly they were planning on building. Do you remember? Well, um, I think they confirmed that there will be um, four new attractions. Wow, four. That's quite a bit. Yeah. So um, I'm just looking. Yes. Uh so it was also in the regular news, not just the theme park news. So two larger attractions and two smaller attractions for 2023. Uh, but no news on what exactly it would be. I think it would make sense if one of them would be a dark ride, but um, not sure. They, yeah, they I just agree. Applied I think that they lack the, a major dark ride, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they have the, the little dark ride section in Merlin's Quest, like the tow boat ride. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm, I'm interested to see what they will do um, with a larger dark ride for sure. But it's not... Yeah, we'll have to see. I think Toverland is really doing well because they also want to make their camping area more permanent... Their events are really on point. Their Halloween is really on point. So it's impressive how, yeah, how the park is growing. The new. It's funny. Yeah, I've seen I always call it the little the park new... that could. Because yeah. Because they're so young and they've, uh, they've accomplished so much. It's oh, yeah. pretty crazy, actually. Yeah. I mean, I think there's only one other park that beats them in 
high speed development and that's energy landia but that's a whole different <laughs> story yeah you know? that's like different <laughs> approaches to the fest yeah is it like kitty coaster number 12 or is it going to be like let's build a dark ride um but yeah i think you're right and uh, i think there's two more things left on our list to discuss which is uh, both in spain they'll be pretty quick because mm-hmm. we don't have uh, too much information on them but both of the two big parks slash resorts in spain um, are both adding new coasters if we are on the right path. We definitely mm-hmm. know it's a new coaster for uh, Parque Warner. Yes. Um, a new steel coaster. Um, looks like it's going to be one of their bigger coasters yet. Um, I believe you mentioned it's going to be right around the Batman La Fuga area. Yeah, it will be in the DC Superheroes World area and um, the old building from the Batman night flight simulator so something similar to time riders at movie park germany uh which i've done in the past but it's been closed since 2014 um so probably it will have a batman theme but not sure yet and oh my god uh, what if it's going to be like dc super rivals i mean i just love the aesthetics oh yeah. so i wouldn't mind having that there too that would be an interesting for sure because it's it hasn't been confirmed. Uh, I don't think it's one hundred percent sure if it's Intamin, but it like most of the reporting is going towards that it's an Intamin coaster. Um, so I guess we can ex- expect something Taron or Taiga like. Um, which is really exciting for that park because it's been waiting for a new major coaster since it opened, basically. <laughs> it's kind of funny how, like, Intamin is now just, like, pumping out these, like... Oh, yeah. Taron, Taiga, Pantheon, Velocicos, Tutatis kind of coasters right now. And then oh, there's yeah. all the ones in Asia. I mean, they are they are just pumping them out. It's pretty insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And meanwhile, um, there's been some... Um, on the Twitter account Freak Planet, we've seen some um, construction going on in Porta Ventura as well for maybe a coaster uh, coming next to the um, western area of the park. So close to, I think, close to the entrance for the hotel guests of um, one of the western themed hotels. Is it Colorado Creek? That one? Uh, it's, well, you have Maison Lucie, uh, that, which is part of the hotel. I think it's, um, um, Gold River Hotel. Oh, okay, cool. Yes. And uh, so it may be an River, indoor yes. coaster and it also may be related to their FIFA sponsorship slash collaboration for what may be their new gate. Or it may just be rolled into the same park. I, I'm pretty sure when they released information, it was talked about as like an additional soccer theme park. Yeah. Kind of like Ferrari Land. They're just building a bunch of small parks. Um, so we'll have to see what the mm-hmm. final the final actual concept is. But I'm excited nonetheless. Yeah. Because on the one hand, we have the construction there. And they also bought a hotel more to the center of Salau. So not near the park but a bit more downtown which is also interesting to see that not them pulling a universal moving part of their resort mm-hmm. into a different part of the city mm-hmm. interesting but, and 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 i like that because uh personally i i've been twice to the resort but i've never been to the beach there at, in salau so it will be nice to connect more with the local uh atmosphere um, oh totally i'm sure mm-hmm and I think that kind of rounds up our uh, our news for this episode. Um, yeah, I think there's one little thing I'd like to add. Uh, oh, do it. They just announced that a loop coaster is coming in Lego. Yay. <laughs> That's right. The so if you Legos want to bike. have a, a looping coaster at home, uh, it's coming July 5th for four hundred dollars so oh start saving <laughs> yeah, it's so expensive it's like do you want to go on like a week trip to port Ventura, or do you want to <laughs> or do you want to build a want little a loop, lego coaster, lego loop coaster. <laughs> it, it looks quite Beautiful. nice it has this lift to instead of a chain lift it's like an actual lift system so in the style of um super splash at uh um Salant, but not rotating and then um, from there, you have a little coaster going to to 
loops. So uh, it looks fun, a bit expensive, but I mean. Yeah. You build your own real life coaster for Fortnite fitting. Um, that's great. And um, for anyone that is looking for more content, we have a YouTube channel now. So go find us on YouTube. Um, visit thecoasterkings.com for a bunch of new articles. We've got a new one from Sven launching. Uh, probably by the time we listen to this, we've got a bunch yes. of European stuff mostly right now. We've got a uh, Tron versus Guardians of the Galaxy article um, for those who kind of want to figure out where on the scope of modern Disney coasters are these two. Um, all that stuff is available to you. Um, wherever you're listening, I would love a review, five stars preferably, um, <laughs> for like the Coaster Kings radio podcast. And we will catch you on the next episode. All right. Until next time. Bye.